Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, part one of the workbook, lesson 129. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. This is the thought which follows from the one we practiced yesterday. You cannot stop with the idea this world is worthless, for unless you see that there is something else to hope for, you will only be depressed. Our emphasis is on not giving up the world, but on exchanging it for what is far more satisfying, filled with joy, and capable of offering you peace. Think you this world can offer that to you? I'm just going to turn that down so it's not so loud. It might be worth a little time to think once more about the value of this world. Perhaps you will concede there is no loss in letting go all thought of value here. The world you see is merciless indeed, unstable, cruel, unconcerned with you, quick to avenge, and pitiless with hate. It gives but to rescind and takes away all things that you have cherished for a while. No lasting love is found, for none is here. This is the world of time where all things end. Is it a loss to find a world instead where losing is impossible? I'm going to go down to footnote 208. This refers to what the Course often calls the real world, a world we can see now if we look with the eyes of Christ. Thus the phrase beyond this world in today's idea does not imply that we need to physically leave this world to find the world I want. Rather, it implies that we need to use the eyes of Christ to look past the world shown to us by our body's eyes. Where love endures forever, hate cannot exist and vengeance has no meaning. Is it lost to find all things you really want and know they have no ending and they will remain exactly as you want them throughout time? Yet even they will be exchanged at last for what we cannot speak of. For you go from there to where words fail entirely into a silence where the language is unspoken and yet surely understood. Communication, unambiguous and plain as day, remains unlimited for all eternity. And God himself speaks to his Son as his Son speaks to him. Their language has no words, for what they say cannot be symbolized. Their knowledge is direct and wholly shared and wholly one. How far away from this are you who stay bound to this world? And yet how near are you when you exchange it for the world you want? Now is the last step certain. Now you stand an instant space away from timelessness. Here you can but look forward, never back to see again the world you do not want. Here is the world that comes to take its place as you unbind your mind from the little things the world sets forth to keep you prisoner there. Value them not and they will disappear. Esteem them and they will seem real to you. Such is the choice. What loss can it be for you in choosing not to value nothingness? This world holds nothing that you really want but what you choose instead you want indeed. Let it be given you today. It waits but for your choosing. It waits but for your choosing it to take the place of all the things you seek but do not want. Practice your willingness to make this change ten minutes in the morning and at night, and once more in between. Begin with this. Beyond this world there is a world I want. I choose to see that world instead of this. For here is nothing that I really want. Then close your eyes upon the world you see, and in the silent darkness watch the lights that are not of this world light one by one, until where one begin until where one begins another ends, loses all meaning as they blend in one. 
today the lights of heaven bend to you and shine upon your eyelids as you rest beyond the world of darkness. Here is light your eyes cannot behold, and yet your mind can see it plainly and can understand. A day of grace is given you today and we give thanks. This day we realize that what you feared to lose was only loss. Now do we understand there is no loss, for we have seen its opposite at last, and we are grateful that the choice is made. Remember your decision hourly and take a moment to confirm your choice by laying by whatever thoughts you have and dwelling briefly only upon this. The world I see has nothing that I want. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. And um, I'll go ahead and read Alan Watson and Robert Perry's commentary on this. It's my driving pillow. <laughs> Beyond this world is a world I want. So today is a purpose Today's purpose is to have a day of grace in which you see the world you really want. Through this, you will realize that giving up the world you do not want is giving up of nothing in order to gain everything. So three times, morning, evening, and once in between for 10 minutes. Begin by repeating, beyond this world, there is a world I want. Sorry, I'm trying to make that there we go beyond this world there is a world I want I choose to see what that world I choose to see that world instead of this for here is nothing that I really want try to say these lines with feeling they are trying to inspire in you a real desire to exchange this world for the real world and a genuine choice resulting from that desire. Feel the desire, make the choice, then close your eyes and watch and wait expectantly for, for an experience of true vision, a glimpse of the real world. I see this practice as very similar to lesson 75. You might want to read paragraphs six to eight in that lesson. The main difference in this lesson is that we are seeking an eyes closed rather than an eyes open experience of vision. We are seeking to see a light of meaning and holiness that our eyes cannot see, only our mind. While you sit and watch and wait, feel your desire to see a world of meaning that is totally harmless, peaceful, benign, and loving, without a trace of pain or loss. You may want to repeat the idea from time to time to renew your focus and to clear your mind of wandering thoughts. So once per hour for a moment, pause in this lesson. Clear your mind and dwell on these lines. The world I hold, the world I see holds nothing that I want. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. Make this repetition a confirmation of the choice you made in the longer practice periods to exchange this world for the real world. The course is so down to earth sometimes. You cannot stop with the idea the world is worthless for unless you see that there is something else to hope for, you will only be depressed. So true. The statement that the world is worthless is pretty blunt. There can't be much debate about what it means. And I have to confess that even after 10 years of studying the Course and over time coming to agree with its ideas, I still find that wording a little jarring. I can almost hear myself replying, uh, that isn't exactly how I put it. Because there is still something in me that wants to find some value here something worthwhile, something worth preserving and striving for. The emphasis of the Course, however, isn't on giving up the world, but on exchanging it for what is far more satisfying, filled with joy, and capable of offering you peace. Well, that's not such a bad deal, is it? It begins to look especially good if we take a hard look at the world we're trying to hang on to. Merciless, unstable, cruel, unconcerned with you, quick to avenge, and pitiless with hate. 
Events such as the 1995 bombings of a government building in Oklahoma City in Oklahoma City and the rabid rage against the bomber are both testimony to this as well as 9/11 of course. The bomber was thought to be avenging the government's actions against David Koresh and Waco and then people wanted vengeance on the bomber. The many, mo the many wars motivated by racial, religious, or ethnic differences are vengeance cycles that have been going on for centuries. This is the way, this is the world of time where all things end. I'm sorry, this is the way the world is. No lasting love is found for none is here. This is the world of time where all things end. That, perhaps, is the cruelest part of all about this world. Even when you do find love, it can't last forever. So, wouldn't you rather find a world where it is impossible to lose anything? Where vengeance is meaningless? Is it a loss to find all things you really want and know they have no ending and that they will remain exactly as you want them throughout time? It's speaking here of what the Course calls the real world. In the following sentence, you go from there to where words fail entirely, is talking about heaven, a non-physical existence in eternity. What is it talking about when it speaks of all the things you really want? If they are things that have no ending and don't change over time, they can't be anything physical, certainly not bodies. It is speaking of love itself. It is speaking of our self, which is spirit, and which we share with everyone. We are here to find the changeless in the midst of the changeable, and to learn to value what is changeless and let go of what is changeable. When we choose the changeless and value the real world of spirit instead of what changes and decays, it brings us very close to heaven and prepares us for it. Losing our grasp on the world makes the transition to heaven easy. Holding on to the world brings loss. When you try to cling to the perishable, you doom yourself to suffering. As we saw in yesterday's commentary, Buddhism has long taught a similar lesson. Doing the practice exercises for today has a remarkable effect. When I say, the world I see holds nothing that I want, beyond this world is a world I want, I find myself noticing all the attachments I still have to things in the world. I find myself noticing that my conception of what is beyond this world that I really want is a bit vague, and so I bring that attachment and that unclarity to the Holy Spirit and ask that He help me in those areas. I know he will. Thank you for joining with me. Please join with me in my meditation on Lesson 129, Beyond This World There Is A World I Want. I love you. Thank you.